You're listening to the Batuta Advocates Weekly News Wrap on Desert Rock FM 96.5. Welcome back to the Batuta Advocate Weekly Bulletin. There's a lot going on. I mean, you're tuning in to get the real news from us, but I'm sure you've uh, been privy to a lot of the goings-ons in the Australian news cycle this week. It's been one of the busier ones we've had in a while. My name's Clancy Overall, editor of the Batuta Advocate. And my name's Errol Parker. And I am Wendell Hussey. What is in the fucking news this week, Wendell? Well, it's been a huge week down in Canberra there, just as you alluded to, Clancy, and we'll start off with a story that summed it all up. The headline reads, Report what an absolute waste of everyone's fucking time and money. That's right. After weeks and months of trying to pass some legislation that would make it easier to kick gay and trans kids out of schools, the federal government has decided that they're going to drop the whole thing. After a 5am finish on Wednesday and months of debating about this bill that staunch Christians like New South Wales Premier Dominic Perrottet oppose, the government is just letting it go. Yeah, because it's going to get voted down in the Senate after getting through the House of Representatives, Errol. Yeah, I believe that's pronounced Senate, but Ah, uh, we'll move on. Yeah, they they were going to try to bring it back in the Senate in a few weeks' time because the changes that got made to the bill stopping people firing other people because of their sexuality or gender. So, that's that. Well, it successfully torpedoed three of the seven days our politicians have in Parliament until they go into election caretaker mode and help distract them from other important things like the Federal Integrity Commission. That's off the table. So not the worst outcome for the government, who've claimed that Labor have blocked their bill to protect people of faith. Yeah, it has taken a huge toll on our leader. A story that we broke a couple of days ago was about the Prime Minister being hospitalised with exhaustion after completing a full day of work lobbying for the church. Yeah, there's a little bit to this story. So after trying and failing to help his Pentecostal mates out with that religious discrimination bill we just mentioned, Morrison actually collapsed. After sitting through the marathon parliamentary session, the PM was found out of breath and frail after pulling a shift the average nurse has been expected to do week on week since the start of the pandemic. He then, in an effort to maintain his relatable blokey personality, he took himself to a pub where he ordered a Han light shandy, then completely collapsed. Obviously, Barnaby Joyce staring over the bar didn't help. But then, you know, he was taken to a Canberra hospital after being forced to do his first full day's work since, uh, I think, his first day at Tourism Australia? Yeah, Alan Went weighed in in the comments section, empathising with the Prime Minister there, saying, I've never seen so much effort go into a dog whistle. Fair enough, the bloke must be absolutely buggered, and we've been told he's recovering well and preparing for that appearance on 60 Minutes on Sunday night. Some entertainment news now. We've got a story about Married at First Sight, and the headline reads, Man who had to go on reality TV show show to find a partner claims he slept with over 350 women. Look, I just don't know why we have to report on this stuff. I mean, there's more pressing things like how koalas are now endangered in Queensland, New South Wales and Victoria. If their meat wasn't so delicious, I don't think they would be endangered. Yeah, I mean, that's a fair point too, uh, Errol. But maths is news now in this day and age, and that's what it is. And it's not that different to you and Wendell spending five hours on a Saturday watching horses run around a nicely mowed paddock. Millions of Australians watch this stuff every night, and this was one of the big talking points this week. This big Texan bloke claiming that he's lay with over 350 partners in his time as a single man. That's what he claimed, and that's what made the headlines in the Batuta Advocate. Obviously, there's a lot of the factors around his manner, behaviour, and the statistical probability of that high number that led people at home to be pretty sceptical of his claims. Well, Clancy, I'd rather have horses in a paddock than you and your mates smearing poo on the wall in national television, I'll tell you what. Well, mate, that was a protest over our rights as political prisoners. But, you know, those days are behind me now. Certainly made a statement. Some news from here in town now. And a local woman has sighed as her husband spots his most degenerate mate arrive at a party. Yes, obviously not too much of a degenerate to smear poo on the walls. But Batuta Heights local Beth Arthur let out an audible sigh and muttered, for fuck's sake, last weekend. That was after her husband, who promised to be on his best behaviour, locked eyes with his social kryptonite standing across the room. Yeah, fully aware of what was about to happen, Beth says she watched her hubby waltz over to his pig of a mate who had that look in his eye. He had that look in his eye and she knew their plans of a nice bushwalk the following morning were already ruined. Yeah, as she said to the advocate, I don't know what it is, but when the two of them get together, all sense of responsibility goes out the window. The last time the two of them bumped into each other, Tim didn't get home until 4am on a Wednesday. Tell you what, 
I've uh, done enough bushwalks in my life with the French Foreign Legion. I don't need to do any more on a Sunday morning. There you go, Earl. Now we head over to China for some sports news, and it's been revealed that the world's pro snowboarders are starting to get a little bit snappy after 72 hours in Beijing without any reefer. Yes, when it comes to being an Olympian, it takes a lot of sacrifice. Obviously, all the hours it takes to get to a level where you can compete among the best, the night saying no to your mate's invitations to the pub, endless amount of injuries nursed and so on. But for the world snowboarders, the biggest sacrifice of all has been going without any of the devil's lettuce while over there in Beijing. Yeah, because unfortunately in China, they shoot you for bags and I think they cane you for uh, having a bit of the reefer. So, uh, look, it's going to be a few more days until they can wrap their lips around uh, sweet Mary Jane. But, you know, I haven't been... Uh, I haven't been minding this uh, Winter Olympics because this time of year we're really depraved of sport. We are lucky. February is the worst sporting month, so we are lucky to have the uh, the Winter Games going right now. It gives me something to um, recklessly bet on, you know. I'm not... I'm, betting is best done on sports you know nothing about, in my opinion. Absolutely. A uh, nice break to reality TV season for us all. Anyway, that's all we've got time for this week. Thanks for your company, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.